And welcome back to the MMA Meltdown Radio Show here on Mile High Sports, AM 1510, FM 93.7. We have a very special guest with us today, the All-American, Brian Stan. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Everything's going well, man. Just uh, cutting some weight, getting ready for Saturday night. Cutting weight, perhaps the worst part of fighting, wouldn't you agree? Uh, it's, it's one of them, but I'm pretty used to it now. I've got a good system down. Oh, that's awesome. Now, Brian, you're going to be fighting Shale Sonnen on UFC 136, which can be seen on pay-per-view this Saturday, October 8th. Now, given Shale's attitude and, and his total disrespect, not really disrespect, but trash-talking towards most of his other opponents, how do you feel he's addressing you in terms of the respect he's given you? Well, you know, it's different. You know, me and Shale have a pre-existing relationship where, you know, I actually went up to Portland and trained once before uh, for a week. And, you know, we fought on the same WC cards a few times. And we also have a very common mentor in life and a man named John Bartis, who's actually one of my head coaches, who, who's known Shale for years as well. And so, you know, we, we've known each other through other contacts and met on occasion, and there was a, a respect that was developed over time. We both know, you know, what kind of men we are. So it, it wasn't a surprise to me at all that he didn't trash talk me. And if you look back at some of his fights, you know, he didn't trash talk Dan Miller or, or Yushin Okami or Nate Marquardt either. I think everybody really remembers him for those Anderson Silva and the Paulo Filo fights. And then, you know, recently, um, you know, the other guys that maybe he's spoken about, I think people just assume that he's going to talk trash on everybody. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely, uh, his definite dislike for Team Blackhouse is apparent to everybody. Now, when you say you're the All-American, Brian, most people might think, oh, he played football in college, he played varsity wrestling, he was just this all-around American kind of guy. But the reality of it is, is, is you're an Iraq war vet, right? Correct. Now, you got into a situation, I believe it was May of 2004, 2005, and you had a team of 42 individuals that you led out of an ambush. How was that? I don't really want to discuss that. You know, it's just one of those things where... Um you know, people try and touch up as much as possible. I was just a Marine officer who was, you know, doing my job and, and what I was supposed to do. And uh, there's a lot of guys that are currently, you know, in Afghanistan and Iraq that are, that are doing that right now. And, um, you know, that, that don't get attention or the abilities to, uh, you know, to, to do radio interviews, et cetera. You know, so it's it was just simply a guy doing his job like so many others over there sacrificing right now. Yeah, and, and I recall reading about it and you getting the Silver Star over it, and you didn't necessarily, necessarily say you wanted the Silver Star for the recognition, but you wanted to, wanted it to more say that you got 42 people out of there, your entire team out of there, so that's great. Now, when you were in the military, you also that's when you started your uh, mixed martial arts career as well, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Uh, you know, I started doing you know, our hand-to-hand combat program, the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program, and some of my instructors competed locally in different grappling tournaments and MMA fights. And I, I didn't know that it was that easy, you know, to get into an amateur match. And it was just, I fell in love with it instantly. And not being able to play football anymore, and you know, it just, be, it, you know, overwhelming. It became my newest hobby. So every day when I was done training and, and done with work in the Marine Corps, you know, that's what I would do at night was I would just train mixed martial arts. And, uh, it just became part of my life. I never anticipated it becoming my career or, or where it's gone it's it's you know basically a dream come true now you talk about the hand-to-hand combat you learned in the military how does that and, and does it still apply to some of your techniques that you use today uh, you know it, it's really basic you know, you, there, there, there's a system that they have to be able to teach to thousands of people so you have to keep it you know pretty basic as far as you know different ground fighting techniques striking techniques and it's really a weapons-based system as well because in the Marine Corps, you know, in our fights, you're always going to be armed with something, whether it be a knife, your rifle, something. So um, it, it's very different, but the biggest piece of it was there's a huge character side to their program where as you learn different techniques and as you move up to different belt systems, you have to do different studies, different talks, different teachings, and different, uh, you know, values lessons. And I think that's really important because it helps develop who you are as a person as you're constantly studying these very honorable people that have served for you in these different martial cultures and, and pieces of history. I think it's, it's really an amazing program as far as your personal development. So the hand-to-hand combat techniques was more along the lines of giving you a really solid base to start working from, right? Exactly, exactly. You know, it just made me hungrier to learn more, to get more in-depth in jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai and boxing and wrestling. Okay. Now, coming into the fight against Shale Sonnen at UFC 136, you're, you're riding a three-fight win streak. Now, Shale's an obviously an aggressive guy. He just kind of keeps coming at you and keeps coming at you. Are you doing anything different in your training considering what this win can do for your career? 
Well, you know, I'm definitely doing a lot of things different in my training. It, it, you know, I'm really not thinking past the fight as far as what it could do for my career, but, uh, you know, I've really tried to sit like that in training. You know, get the guys that come in and just put the pressure on you, push you against that fence and try and take you down and hold you down. And so, you know, I've been doing that for 10 weeks. It's, uh, it's taking its toll on my body, and, and I'm ready to do it for real. You know, the biggest thing is that in order to close that distance and take me down, you got to come through striking range, and I'm going to try and make it pay every time he does. And w- what's the situation like when, like we're already talking about, you're cutting weight, your body's, you know, exhausted from going through all the training, getting ready for this particular fight. What's, I mean, how tough is it to, to have that exhaustion from going through training then going right into a weight cutting, which is another exhausting process? I mean, how many days of just pure rest are you going to get before you fight? Well, you know, you, you have to be real disciplined with it. And luckily, uh, you know, I've, I've brought in the right people around me to help me through that area. Uh, you know, my very close friend, fellow Marine, George Lockhart, is the best performance nutritionist in, in mixed martial arts. And, you know, we were close for years. And he's been handling my nutrition now for about five fights. And so, you know, we're really scientific about what goes in my body, what are the right things to help me recover, uh, how do I want to taper my training down uh, before I come here and start cutting the weight so that it's really not all that bad. In fact, George is actually managing uh, Kenny Florian's cut as well. So he's got a number of guys in the UFC and um, has really done a great job with, with guys like me and Kenny who are cutting weight, et cetera, and then getting ready to go in there and maximize their performance. Now, I definitely appreciate the time, and, and I'm sure the listeners appreciate the time that you're setting aside for us right now. In addition to, to the weight cutting, in addition to the training, you have a whole media uh, situation you have to deal with. What kind of toll does that take on your situation as well? Well, you know, I, I, it never really affected me negatively. You know, it's just one of those things that you have to do, and I think I got used to it because I fought in the WEC, which was a new organization, and every guy they had fighting on the roster was obligated with a lot of media, even if you had only one or two fights, because it was a new organization. So it's part of your job as a professional fighter to, to sell your fight, and to get out there and do the things you're supposed to do. It's you know, it's what the company asks of you, and I'm a professional. It's, if I'm asked to do something or told to do something, then I do it, and that's part of my job, and it's been explained to me thoroughly uh, before I ever walked into the hotel to get ready for the fight. You know, you know that coming in, so if you're somehow disappointed by media obligation, then you're in the wrong business. Right, right. Now, Brian, do you ever take an opportunity to kind of step back, and, and maybe you do, do it during every camp, but do you ever take the opportunity to stand back, look down at your hands, and kind of take in all the accomplishments you've made so far? You know, it, it's funny you say that. Uh, you do. I think every fighter does, you know, and I don't know if it's so much the, the accomplishments, but you just kind of look at the road. And one of the things that makes this sport so special is because it's such a difficult and complex sport and, and there's so many ways to win and lose, you become a better person through it. There's no way you can be a guy at the UFC level and not have humility. And I think, uh, you know, I would say 90% of the guys at this level that are in the UFC have a whole lot of humility, a whole lot of honor, obviously courage. Um, you know, they're just men of good values because of what you go through, the, the difficulties in your training camp, um, the struggles you're going to go through as a young fighter, you know, financially and trying to make it and training, et cetera. That just breeds good people. And, you know, it's been a pleasure for me to train and, and fight with so many good guys that it, it reminds me a little bit of my time in the military where I served with so many outstanding individuals. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, I've, I've been able to make it and last in the UFC so long because I really I value and, and appreciate my opportunities here. Now, and, and that's a great way of looking at it. And, and again, it's nice for us fans to hear that those fighters and, and the fighters at your level do take that time to kind of reflect on everything that's, that's, uh, that they've been blessed with. Now, I understand you don't want to look past Shale, and, and obviously nobody really should look past Shale, son. And, but if you do beat him, do you, do you intend to stay in the race for the championship belt, or do you think that you'll get a shot right away? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I certainly think I deserve it. I think a win over Chael is is better than a win over anybody else in the division besides the champion, without a doubt. Um, people can say whatever they want, but you know there's a reason why they told me I had to take this fight because nobody else wanted it. So, um, you know, I, I think I definitely deserve it. So I, I think he is, without a doubt, the second guy in the division. And um, you know, he's he, you know to get to the title, that's the guy you have to get through. Right, right. Now, Brian, again, we definitely do appreciate you coming on the MMA Meltdown Radio Show. Is there anybody out there you wanted to thank? Any sponsors, family member, friends, anything? 
Uh, yeah, sure. You know, I just want to thank my team at Hire Heroes USA, uh, a nonprofit organization that helps veterans get jobs for everything they're doing every day. And, uh, you know, I help or thank uh, Gasperi Nutrition, Bodybuilding.com, Affliction, uh, and the gun store and TRX and VA Mortgage Center dot com. All my sponsors have been so supportive and also helping veterans get jobs as well and helping me with my charity hire here at USA. Okay, Brian. Well thank you again for your time and good luck on Saturday, buddy. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, you have a great day, sir.